Hello friends! I promise I'll show you how I make my time tracking app um, using generative pages. And the idea was to start with something I've made with a custom page in the past. I know this custom page doesn't look nice. It was only about experimenting with PCFs. And in this case, I was trying to make a PCF which would allow me to drag and drop from one day to the other and duplicate some time entries or show some aggregation on the right side which with the data which was not inside the custom page because I have it for the whole month. And for that I had to solve a few challenges. So first of all the biggest problem was what I was showing uh, in, in the last blog. I've made these generative pages uh, with um, with a time tracking without having a good prompt for that. But uh, you could see that the default is using Material UI. And since I have Model Dream Nap, I don't want to have another library because it's looking a little different than the Model Dream Naps. And the other challenge was trying to use Fluent9 also using the theming because I am in more driven app and I have a green theme and I want to have it for my generative pages too. Now let's see how my prompts are looking like. So I have seven prompts. In the first one I have I'm trying to solve the few general challenges. Um, so my first part of the prompt is build a responsive page for time tracking. And then I'm trying to solve the problem of using Fluent9. So I'm just saying, I'm saying my agent use only controls from Fluent9 and respect the theming from Fluent9 by wrapping the whole app in the Fluent provider. Trying to think like a developer and I know what it need and I was just saying. So maybe in the future we won't need to do that. I hope so. Um, but for now, just saying, uh, saying the agent what it should do, I could solve that problem. Also, had to tell, never use hard-coded colors. Sometimes it did, sometimes it didn't. So I just told him, always use Fluent9 theming tokens. And was not enough because it was sometimes still using some parts of from Material UI. So I told him also, don't use Material UI. And that was it. Using that, I, I could have the same result each time it was using Fluent9 and only Fluent9. Then I was start, uh, starting to tell the page how it's composed. So I have a header with a height of uh, 40 pixels. And the rest is split in two horizontal containers. The main area, uh, which is also split in two horizontal containers, like the filter area with a height of 100 pixels and the data area. And also a side pane, so a side area with four statistics with a width of 200 pixels and should be collapsible and expandable using the icons and here I'm telling which icons from Fluent9 I want to be used. Then the filter area should be also split into vertical zones and the upper one it's a calendar picker for the weeks which allow to navigate through the weeks and the lower filter area shows the days in the selected week. Then I'm trying to solve the problem of filtering data because right now the generative pages is not aware of the user ID or stuff like that. If you just say show only my records, uh, usually doesn't know what to do and sometimes doesn't even show an error. It's just saying it should be filtered somewhere in the backend. So to solve that problem, I've told him that I want the record used by the current user, but I'm telling how to do that by adding this filter to the query and I'm adding there the one which it's actually uh, filtering on the user ID fetch XML query. Um, also filter on the selected week, show only the column names 
lab labeled as command value project and milestone then i'm going to the next challenge and i'm telling the prompt how to use the model driven apps theme and from that i'm passing the code it's not the best code for that i'm just loading this page so the, this web resources which is uploaded in my web resource and i having there all my green colors uh, i made the compromise here because i'm defining all the colors i didn't want to deal with uh, generating uh, by starting with one color and using that i'm just passing this um, this function telling how to parse that xml how to take that colors and using that we're gonna create um, a theme which could be then uh, attached to the to the fluent provider and then i'm saying also use the table control it's from fluent 9 and the selected row should be uh, shown using the appearance brand so that would be my first prompt now let's see how this one is working and let's see how this one works. I'm going to the page and I'm adding that table. I have the time entry, the project, and the milestone a table from the database, which I'm adding. And I'm already seeing the structure of the page, it's, which is there. And I see that the theming from, from Fluent9, it's, using, it's used there. I'm having there only Fluent9 controls and the fluent provider is there with a theme which was generating everything is nice in place now for the second prompt i'm trying to make the edit dialog so i'm just saying in the prompt on click of, of the row the columns should be editable in the dialog and i'm telling which column to have there in the dialog and to use the fluent 9 field and also telling there that the name should be lab labeled as command and I have to tell that the project lookup and the milestone lookup should be taken from the table project and milestone. Sometimes it works without telling that but usually the drop down uh, didn't have any, any records there so I had to tell him to take the records from that table. Also was important to tell to the date to save in UTC format. Also for the lookup I had to tell that it should only use the name field um, because otherwise it's using sometimes the GUID. So don't don't show the GUID but use the GUID for saving. Also when the data is changed refresh the sum in the filter area. Now let's use that prompt. I'm just pasting that and watching the prompt think and watching the code generation. I don't have to do the hard work for now. And uh, I have there a dialog which it's opened. I can even see the drop, drop downs and the date picker. And uh, well, I can try it out. So let me change the drop downs there. And I'm also changing the date and when I save you can see that everything gets refreshed. The third prompt it's about defining the filter area and here I had to tell that I need the weeks to start with Monday. Tiles on the filter should cover the complete area otherwise what was sometimes uh, left bounded. And um, the tile is showing the day and the sum of the time entries for that value and the sum of a time entry value column because that's what I want to sum there uh, using the design like an attached image. And the attached image it's something like this. So, uh, it's a, a small image where I have the date, the day description and the sum of that day. Um, also, when a day is clicked in this filter area, it should open the dialog and allow me to create a time entry uh, position for that date. Now I'm taking that prompt for the filter area and also attaching the image to the prompt and 
let it start working and well watching how it works and uh, uh, here it is it doesn't look very bad um, I have there the filter area and I can switch and also if I click on a tile there on a day I'm able to create a new record on that date the next part the next prompt it's about grouping per day so I have the data and the table and now I want to group it for a day so just split the data area to show a group per day use the table 9 the table control from fluent 9 for that the columns which I want to see in the table don't show duration because I have another column in the table and I won't, don't want to show that um, the table entries height should um, have enough space so I don't need to scroll inside the table uh, the table header should have this color from the Fluent 9 theming, the color brand background too. Uh, I should have at least 200 pixels for one day and the date area should be scrollable so I'm able to scroll to the end. Keep everything else unchanged. It helps to tell that because sometimes it's, it's changing a little more than it should so I'm trying to tell the agent to respect the other prompts. Now I'm going to use the prompt and telling everything about grouping to the agent which it's starting to work again for me and in the end I'm gonna switch to the week where I have the data you can see it's grouped now by day and I still have the edit functionality when I open a record in the next prompt I'm trying to implement a drag and drop it's something I I was uh, showing in the custom page in the beginning so just add another column with a width of fix, uh, 40 pixel I'm turning which icon should be shown there and the, when this cell uh, is dragged implement a drag and drop to move the row to the and to drop to the target drop day and save the record on the target day. Now taking care of drag and drop just paste the prompt and let it work for me. The same steps just waiting a little and now let's see now I have an extra column to the beginning I have the drag and drop icon and when I drag and drop some, on some other day the data is just moved to the other day like it the next prompt it's about implementing the statistic side pane uh, it's about implementing a statistics area with a gallery of all days of the month and the sum of the values of time entries for each day the day should be ordered by columns for each weekday starting with Monday. I have some definition here how the tile should work or should look like it doesn't always work the best so I have an uh, image here which I'm attaching with the design of the day uh, of the statistic area. Uh, also a click on a day inside the statistics should change the week filter so I just can just navigate to that week when the time entry is saved refresh the statistics gallery on the right side too and I'm using that attached image I'm just pasting the prompt again with the statistics and adding that image for that and let it work again And here it is. I have the sums for each day of the week. I can move to the previous week and see the data. And the last prompt, it's the easiest one. I just wanted to implement a dark mode. 
So implement a dark mode switcher in the header. The light or dark mode should apply to the complete page. Use light mode as default. Now I'm just going to use that prompt just to tell to make it a dark mode and also waking, waiting a little. And when the agent is done, I'm going to test the page again because I want to see that everything is working as expected. I can switch the week. I can go to dark mode. Everything is looking good. I have the theming from the more driven apps. I can work with the controls. I can switch again. And if I'm trying to drag and drop, it's still working. Let me see. Yes. I'm able to move it to another date and the sum is refreshed. I hope you are that impressed as I am with the possibilities we get from more driven apps. We were able to tell the prompt, to tell the agent to work with Fluent 9 and have a page which is already adapted to the look and feel from more driven apps, including theming. And um, well, we have to solve some challenges right now. Maybe they will, it will get easier in the future because this, these features are only in the beginning. I'm really looking forward to see what's coming and please stay tuned and discover the features together. Thank, thanks for watching.